Hello everybody and welcome to some more World of Warcraft action. This is Party PD here. We're going to talk about the advanced side of crafting. Now what exactly do I mean by the advanced tactics as the title so much says? Well, advanced tactics is just going to be me kind of explaining almost every single item and every single profession in the game when it comes to the ones that you're going to really need to know the most. One of which I already managed to forget to learn, which is from the cooking and fishing instructor. So we'll get this real quick. Um, both professions being cooking and fishing actually play a significant portion because I hate to say this, but both of the skills. Okay, well, fishing doesn't have it, but you can make things in fishing. That's right. You can make pools, but I'm pretty sure this is just. Well, it's not you can make pools. So you remember how in BFA where the more you fished in a pool, the more proficient you became in that kind of fish or the more you harvested one material, the more proficient you became in that. Well, fishing now has that proficiency thing. So you have to pay attention to that. Each school can allow you to get a certain kind of specialty fishing and so on and so forth, which increases based on your skill level. So let's go ahead and get this real quick. So all these things on beta, you're not actually ever going to see. So for example, Professor Instructat's brain, uh, you will never see. That's not a normal item. You will never see that item in existence. So it won't ever give you this thing where you could just click everything and learn it. That's That doesn't exist. So that's the first thing I wanna talk about. But basically we're gonna go over every item in the game while making while telling you what exactly that item will do further down the line the first one i want to cover is the files and potions master so again you aren't going to see this in your normal game there's no such thing as the grand apothecary all chat i know that's not what he is but it's it's all chat it's all chat it's her. so it's it's grand apothecary all chat so very, very first, right off the get-go, files are just going to be used strictly as files. There's nothing further beyond you can use with files. They will be can they will always be a file. So it's not like a file can turn into a grand file. Or it's not like a file is gonna turn into a cauldron. There are some files you could use to make a cauldron, but it's it's a different kind of system, which I will explain while in this menu, because there is the alchemist cauldrons that are part of this. So right off the get-go, we're going to go ahead and talk about some of these other potions. So there is a damage potion, much like throwing an explosive from engineering, you now have an explosive damage potion. This does not evolve into anything either. Same thing with frozen focus, chilled clarity, writhing, channeling, spores, accelerated mana potions, and healing potions. They do stay at their normal rank, but rank 3 to rank 1, significant difference, 30k average difference. Elemental Potions of Power. Now, Elemental Potions of Ultimate Power are used in order to make specific cauldrons. One of which being the Ultimate Power Cauldron, which if we jump to the last page here, you see here, a cauldron of ultimate power and a cauldron of normal power. Both cauldrons contain whether uh, one of these two potions, but the thing is, is that you need to deposit Elemental Chaos to pull out potions. So that's the big new thing with cauldrons, is that in order to extract anything out of a cauldron, you must have primal chaos. Now, what exactly is primal chaos? We discussed it very early at the very beginning of the last video, but primal chaos is a currency, more or less. It's an item that goes into your inventory. That's much like uh, Sanguicel, I'd say, or, um, or Tide Cores from BFA. These items allow you to not only craft specific things because Primal Chaos is needed in certain recipes, but it also allows you to extract potions out of cauldrons, which is probably the big negative downside at the moment to making a cauldron because now there's no such thing as... I hate to say it, you have to make the cauldron and it's really annoying to make. And then after you make the cauldron, your players have to have Primal Chaos on them in order to withdraw from the cauldron. And it's not like you, the crafter, get the Primal Chaos back. It's just gone. So, cauldrons are a little bit of an iffy thing this time around. Um, there's also a way that you don't have to use it. So, for example, the normal cauldron of power, 
you don't need to put Primal Chaos in. It has 120 uses and provides five pots, and the cauldron lasts for 20 minutes. So in reality, if you're running a 40 a 20 man raid and you're doing Mythic, I'd say each person. I mean, it has 120 uses, so each person can use it five times. I think because two times no two times five is 20, so six times. Each person can use it six times because. 6 times 2 is 12 with a 0, so 120. You can use it 6 total times to have that amount of potions in your inventory. But the cauldron only lasts for 20 minutes with a 3 minute cooldown. It provides 5 potions, but the, the big difference is, is that the cauldron of no normal power and the cauldron of ultimate power is pretty huge. So the cauldron of ultimate power requires you to put in primal chaos, while the cauldron of normal power does not. In my professional opinion, I imagine people are going to be making the normal Cauldron of Power more often versus the Cauldron of Ultimate Power, unless you're in a raid, which, again, any Race of the World first guilds out there, I'm still looking. I'd love to craft for you. NA, preferably. And then we have some other Cauldrons. There's this Cauldron called Cauldron of the Puka, and it's exactly as it sounds. You set out a Cauldron of Puka that allies can sample that fuzzy liquid as a refreshing drink to store 80 mana per second for 20 seconds or 80 80 mana over 20 seconds each sip has a tra chance to transform you into an animal so use it caution i'm pretty sure this is a combat potion so i imagine this is one of those ones where it's like either you're at the end of a, of a run or something like that and you consume the potion to get mana at the end of a pull or it could be the new, or it could be a new kind of sleeper pot, which I highly doubt it. And then last, the technical next cauldron is the uh, the sagacious incense, which actually increases your inspiration by thirty. Uh, by actually, it doesn't actually say the number, but uh, it increases your inspiration for thirty minutes at the at the max. I believe it's ten minutes for tier one. Yeah, so. <clears throat> that's another technical cauldron, but that's what's called a crafting cauldron. So let's go back over to the next set of potions here. So like I said, you can have the ultimate power and you can make them. You basically can use the ultimate power potions to make either an ultimate cauldron or a normal cauldron. There is no difference when it comes to when you're making the power potion. <laughs> it's, it's one or the other. There's also invis pots still, mana pots, hush zephyr. That's the new invis, uh, gusts self-explanatory you can go forward and then uh the the anti-rogue potion which i don't think you're going to be able to use in pvp so it doesn't matter next we can go ahead and talk about some of the foods and feasts the first big feast is called the grand banquet of the Kaluk, which is a feast that gives you knighting your primary stat for an hour it's a long time it's usually an hour anyway there's a lot of mysterious kinds of foods out now. You can get double stats like crit and verse for an hour, or you can get like haste and mast. Yeah, haste and mast. You can get verse and mast. You can get crit and mast. Verse and haste. Straight 125 mastery, verse, crit, haste. And then haste and crit. So different kinds of foods out now. There's also some where it's... Uh, Increases your lowest two stats or increases your highest two secondary stats. And then, of course, there's the feast, which is increasing your primary stat. These could just be organic numbers at the moment, too. So don't prompt. Don't rely on this being something you'll have to worry about for your advanced portion. Next, we also do have more glyphs being added. This is just going to change some more stuff. When you have criticals, your judgment criticals call down fire from the sky. Doesn't change the effect whatsoever. Holy shock. Bleh. Death Knights, a Frosty Affinity for your shell, a Crimson Affinity for your shell. Druid Dash now leaves a trail of leaves. That's pretty cool. Levitate will ride on a cloud. A Sentinel. Your Paladin class mounds glow with holy light. Oh, that's pretty good. Guardian Angel now summons the Wrath of a Queen. And your Avenging Wrath depicts four wings. These aren't new glyphs, though. I think these are glyphs that are, like, really old. So, that's the first person. That's your potions guy. There also is some PvP stuff we could talk about, too, but they're not super important. We'll actually cover that in a different video with the new PvP bonuses. 
But right off the get-go, you know, you're looking into the PvP. You got your glad stuff. You got your glad gear. You got your glad badges. You got your glad neck. I mean, it's whatever. I'm not a glad player. I'm just walking around in the glad gear. Next, this is something, again, you won't see, is that this is a guy that you could buy all of the plants from that you may or may not have. Now, this doesn't exist in Dragonflight, but it does exist in some sense of Dragonflight. Some of these recipes will drop from miscellaneous locations, while some of these recipes are also sold by reputation vendors. So, much like we buy recipes right now, say you have to go get the Shadestone recipe from the Court of Harvesters because they're locked behind that weird reputation quest chain thing which I don't know why they did. But this is basically something the equivalent. You're going to run into somebody selling the cauldron recipe for your generic rep. Could be the Tuscar, could be the Red Dragonflight. Who knows? I mean, a lot of people know because if you go onto the beta right now and you're leveling a tune, you could see it in their profession, in their selling thing. So that's basically where that lies. We're going to save uh, Mimsy for the last because Mimsy actually has everything, every rare material in the game. So we're going to go ahead and go to our fresh leather and hides. So like we talked about in the first video, there's basic cloth and then there's heavy cloth in a sense, the wilder cloth. Most likely you're going to have to craft. I say most likely I've already done the data on all this. Anyway, you're going to have to craft it into heavier leather and heavier hide and heavier cloth. But as you can see right off the get-go, there are multiple new sets of white cloth. White? White. Common. There's two sets of common hides now. There's adamant scales and resilient leather, much like in, um, I think in Legion, actually, there was the difference between making a male piece and the difference between making a leather piece. Right now, the difference between making a male piece and a leather piece is how many bones you use versus how much more hide you use to make a leather piece. Right now, the difference is in Dragonflight. It's you use leather or you use scales. That's your base difference now. And it's the same thing with dense hide. You're going to come in with dense hide that's going to be used mostly on leather equipment. Stone crust hide, you get the gist of it. Lustrous scale hide, that's actually going to be for male. And then frostbite is actually going to be for leather. And then you have your basic fur line as well. You got your crystalline fur, which is going to be used in most leather working. Salamander scales, you get the gist of it. Thunder scale, scale. Fell infused hide. Actually, fell infused hide will be used for both. Rock fang leather used for both. Uh, both the horns, plumages, and scales. Dragon scales, all used for both. Basically, the proto scales are actually supposed to be for chest, helmet, and legs. For both sets, but obviously, male is going to end up using more of the dragon scales. Next, we're going to go over to the geologist. So, as you may see right off the get go, we, yes, we are once again using primal flux. We are not changing off of primal flux, at least for the time being. It could be placeholder, who knows? But you're still going to use your old fashioned jeweler's tool set. You're going to use the misshapen figurine for a little while, because then you use the misshapen figurines to craft new uh jewel sets so much like how you were able to use the faucets and fittings now it's going to be you're going to make new sets of faucets and, and fittings instead of just buying a jeweler's fitting from the vendor so that's that's the big downside with jewel crafting so far is that you have to change up all your crafting stuff all over again you get the draconic stopper which i believe is another reagent kind of like the um the elderwood that you get when you mine rocks in the blue place oh my gosh i can't believe i forgot the name of the place hang on i've only been in shadowlands for the last two years uh arden wield so that material is going to be important as well uh and as you know with every expansion there's always going to be a new set of rocks ores leathers cloth enchanting materials you're still going to use the old enchanting rod though <laughs> First, we are going to go into the first new ore. It's called Severite ore, or Serverite. S Servite? Servite. Whatever. And it's going to come in three of the basic tiers, much like we've already talked about. Then you have Draconium ore as your new rare ore, and then your epic ore is Kazgorite ore. You use these ores to end up turning it into alloys, so I can use this blacksmithing window, since I already have, 
you use a lot of these ores so that you can use the uncommon ore and the rare ore to turn it into obsidian seared alloy, which is used to make the big heavy gear that I have on right now. Well, transmog wise, not the actual gear. <coughs> Pardon. I'm talking way too fast. <laughs> That's pretty much what's happening here. I found out what was causing me to cough last time, and it's just I'm talking way too fast. Next, there's also the new sets of alloys, like we've already talked about with the obsidian seared alloy. That's supposed to be your big making 402 pieces, like your mythic equivalent gear. Then you have your frostfire alloy, and then your primal molten alloy. Now, those alloys do actually make a difference because some of them will want you to use specific alloys to make different types of gear, while other ones are going to ask for both. And then at the very beginning, you're going to have mostly requests to make it out of ore. But profession tools are going to take both the, like the mythic material and the normal material up until you don't need to. And of course, I know that Max wasn't happy when he saw this, but yeah, uh, whetstones are back and there's even a new one. There's even a new one. You can use a primal razor stone to increase your finesse with mining herb or skinning by 25 for the next two hours. There's even profession based whetstones. <laughs> It's actually insane. It's really funny. But you can also make some new types of saddles and stuff like that. So you have some new framework for the prototype towards barding framework for dragon riding stuff. Basically, it can be used for other skills. But from what I understand is that you use this to make some, uh, some nice attachments for your dragon down the line. And then skeleton keys are back. And repair hammers are re-added into the game as well. But only blacksmiths can use them. So, and you can't use them in a mythic keystone either. I don't know why. You can't use them in keystones. But you can mount your repair mount if you're in a, in a mount dungeon and hit repair. <clears throat> don't I don't get it. I don't get it. It's very interesting. <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> Sorry, I am talking way too fast. Can't wait to cut that all out. <laughs> Alright, next is the herbs. This is very important. Herb is going to be a very high requested skill. People are going to be wanting you to make stuff in herb nigh all the time. Because potions are going to be going left, right, and center all over the place. So first and foremost, you have three files. You have three vials, pardon. Instead of just your straight up crystal vial with one quality, you have a three quality set of vials, much like three quality sets of everything else. It is important to note that for enchanting, I think inscription, maybe inscription, I'm not sure. But for enchanting and for alchemy, you don't make anything that's up to three uh, up. You only go up to tier three quality unless you're making the philosopher stone or the alchemy stone. If you're making one of those, those can go up to five star quality. But potions can only go up to a three star quality. I again, I don't know if that's placeholder or not. It could be. It could not be. But right now for potions and al or potions, enchanting and possibly inscription. You can only go up to three stars. So keep that in mind when you're crafting. If you're seeing it like you see it's three stars and then there's nothing beyond that. You could stop pouring more into inspiration and just let it go after that. Very important to remember that there are a lot of new herbs, though. A lot of new herbs, much like in Dragon or like in Shadowlands. You have your four basic herbs. So you have Hotch Bloom, Sacrifage. Bubble Poppy, and Wrythebark. Uh, which you could use those herbs to create Primal Convergent or Onominium Convergent. And now you also have the pigments that get sold by the Master Botanists, which were not there before. So that's, that's new to me. But basically, you want to be able to make a Tier 3 Anonium Draconis because that allows you to make 
really strong herbs and really strong potions. All right, now for the big one. This is a pretty important thing to cover because Mismi has literally every rare item in the game. First and foremost, we're going to go into Spark of Ingenuity. I am still uncertain as to where this drops because it did not drop out of a Mythic Keystone and it did not drop out of Raid. So I'm still extremely curious as to where Spark of Ingenuity actually drops from. Artisan's Metal. Now we talked about this in the last video. There is no method to getting Artisan's Metal that we know of outside of your first craft of a specific item. So for example, if I craft, let's say, this illustrious insight, which takes Artisan's Metal to make. Uh, um, let's use something else. So let's say I'm gonna make this, this set of armor spikes, yeah? The first craft will always reward you with five Artisan's Metal as well as a profession knowledge. And then, you know, depending on what your skills are, you can get some back. Like, I'm 18% resourcefulness because of my uh, my bonuses I have here, so. Basically, Artisan's Metal only comes from making something for the very first time. What I haven't done yet is unlearn a skill and relearn it and see if I'm able to craft it again and still get Artisan's Metal. Because if you're able to do that, you can kind of abuse the system a little bit. But from what I understand... Artisan's Metal is not going to be tradable. Currently, it says it is soulbound. So either when you're making a crafting order, you, the crafting order-er, has to provide it or request that somebody has it and uh, hopefully they have it. Because Artisan's Metal, it seems like it's a limited resource. And it's not great that there's a chance it's a limited resource. <laughs> Next, we have Primal Chaos. We've already talked about this. So far from my uh, data, it drops solely from Mythic Plus Dungeons. I'm sure that World Quests will have it. I'm sure that if you're in War Mode, places will have it. Which, by the way, real quick point I wanted to talk about. While in War Mode, there are also specific ores that you can mine that are not there under non-War Mode circumstances. So keep in mind when you're leveling, at the very beginning, you're likely going to run into a lot of people trying to mine these very heavy... Uh, heavily guarded ores. Just saying. Of course, maybe wait a week or so after Dragon Flight's all the way through and then go into war mode and go and mine those rocks yourself. I will advise that it is ideal that if you're going to do this method of mining, have a friend go on to an RP server, have them shard you into that server, and then have fun. Because how many people are going to be playing while on an RP server at the very get-go? Uh, Every race to world first guild in the game, <laughs> pretty much. <clears throat> Next, we have yet another neural silencer being added. This one is, much like the other ones, prevents you from getting uh, uh, pinged by minor annoyances. So what the neural silencer is going to do for you, right? This is very important. Uh, Drakthir have this ability called fly with me where they grab you and move you. They can't do that if you have a neural silencer on. Keep that in mind. New parchments are being added as well for both inscription and enchanting. I don't know what the enchanting parchment's called, but the scribes will have a new set of parchments. The army knife is strictly here for us. There's nothing significant behind the army knife. Sorry. Iridescent water is going to be a new material for scribes as well. And then going back into more scribe stuff, we have the new Dark Moon decks, which is Ace of Fire, Ace of Frost, Ace of Air, and Ace of Earth. This allows you to combine the ace through eight sets. But, you know, you guys don't. When you craft it, it's not going to look like that. So keep that in mind. <laughs> then you have the Pentagold Seal, which is something, again, that, you know, it's not going to... It doesn't exist for you guys. Like, solely this exists, so I could do this. Oh, it's a crafting reagent. Okay, so it's still... It's... Wait. Oh, no. I think you can actually make a tier 5. I think you can make a tier 5 scroll. With this, uh, with this material. <laughs> I haven't seen this material yet. Yet. 
Then there's the Rider's Honor, which is a currency used to buy certain crafting recipes, as well as the Centaur Trophy ne Necklace. Chromatic Dust is the new enchanting base dust. Then you have your Shards, which is going to be a Vibrant Shard and Resonant Crystal. As always, enchanting, you will have the ability to break down bigger shards and put them into dust or put them into the smaller shards. Next, which is something that most people were not very happy about seeing, the return of moats, as they're going to be called Rousing Air this time. So Rousing and Awakened is gonna be your new uh is is gonna be your new stuff, as well as souls. So yeah, moats are back. And then souls are also considered that. So as you can see here, you have all these souls at the very beginning. Next, we have the armor-based additions. So the first one you've already seen me make is armor spikes. This allows you to put some spikes onto your armor, making them not only unique equipped, which by the way, embellished is the new type of unique equipped. And you can only equip two of the items this time around. Much like how we can make the six two, or 262 items in uh, Shadowlands. You can only equip one in Shadowlands. Now you can equip two, but this is something that I want to talk about strictly at the end because this is a huge buff to PvP. Not this one in particular, which uh, gives armor spikes to your armor, which does exactly what it sounds like. You now are a... You, you're a druid. You have thorns, but you don't have thorns. It's a much weaker version of thorns. Same thing with the potion, uh, with the potion inhibitor. Much like in Shadowlands, there was a potion inhibitor that increases potions poten uh, time period by 50%. Same thing here, increases it by 50%. But it, again, it will make it another unique equipped. It is strictly a PvE item. I recommend not using it for anything else. Then you have the Alchemical Flavor Pocket. So this provides the meal with increased duration of well-fed bonuses by 100% and now persists through death. So if you are a Pandaren... Congratulations. This flavor pocket thing is something you're going to want every one of your cooks to use. <clears throat> every single one of your cooks are going to want to use this on their crafting gear. Because like I said earlier, you have crafting gear, so cooks even have crafting gear. Look at that. You have a cooking accessory and a cooking tool now. So no escaping maximizing your cooking potential. Next, we have some more stuff that increases uniqueness of armors, which gives you the ability to strike again for bonus damage. Another one which increases... Infuses the item with the essence of decay. No idea what that does. <laughs> Maybe poison damage. Your ability sometimes echo in time, which is uh, much like the Demon Hunter ability where Chaos Strike has a second a chance to attack. Same thing. While above 90% health, you gain mastery, and it is also a unique equipped. And then last but certainly not least, when you heal someone, when you heal, you sometimes fire a healing dart. Interesting stuff. And then of course we have our missives once again. This now, instead of making just one missive where it's going to be missive of haste and missive of strength, or missive of haste and missive of... Crit, now you have double down missives. So your missive is going to be crit and haste, haste and verse, mastery haste, verse and crit, verse and mast, crit and mast. I'm sure that there's going to be other ways around it. Now here comes the big thing. This is a very important thing for all of crafting. Very, very important thing for all of crafting. The Titan matrixes. The Titan training matrixes are extremely important to all crafting. In world of warcraft the very first thing is the titan matrix tier one now what this does is that it increases the recipe difficulty while also increasing the item level of the item so for example under normal circumstances this piece would be a 386 this is a very bad example because i can't actually use it on that so let's go all the way down here to the explorer's brace as you can see here the item is defaultively a 316 but as i have these tier four training matrixes in here once I put slot this in, the item will become a 376, which increases the item the item's item level while increasing its stats efficiently, while also choosing a custom secondary stat if you use one of the missives if you really want to, while adding finishing reagents, which can only be done through specializations. <clears throat> Again, very complicated stuff. I'm sorry that this is going to be a long video, because this one 100%. It's probably going to be a 30-minute video. Yeah. 
So the Titan Matrixes are extremely important for when you're crafting low-level gear to put them on your high-level tunes, or high-level gear to put them on your even higher-level tunes. 376 is pretty good. It is a filler slot for most pieces because uh, keystone pieces are still pretty low in certain spots. So you want to keep that in mind. But the tier matrix stones go all the way up to tier 4, being the Titan Matrix Mach 4. So you want to keep that in mind when you're crafting because if you're using a wrong matrix while you're crafting, you could fuck, you can, you can mess up the whole craft. Kind of like how when you crafted in Shadowlands, if you forgot to put the... Um, the Corthia modifier or the uh, Zareth Mortis modifier in the craft, you're just making a season one plate piece that is three is two three five instead of two nine one, and nobody wants that. <clears throat> nobody wants that at all. We still have the Draconic Vial, so the Herbalist Spade, which you can use as an herb tool at the very beginning. And then the Fleeting Philosopher's Stone, which, by the way, has an 8-hour cooldown on it. Basically, this does still work as an alchemy tool and you can equip it, but you want to use this stone to make better stones. Enchanted Valium, I guess I was wrong, is still going to be your baseline enchanting, and you can use a Severite Rod, but I think you might still be able to get away with the old rod. However, smudged lenses are now needed in order to make certain engineering things for the engineering class. That's right, now we're into the engineering world. Primal Flux is still going to be our primary deal. Arclight Spanner will be your base tool, and the Gyromatic Micro Adjuster will also be your beginning tool. However, if you are a mechanome like my engineer is, you don't need any of those. It's pretty much pointless. Fishing. Your fishing tool, like I, as you can see here, when I buy this fishing rod, it will tell you that you have an item. I don't think you guys can see that, actually. Let me move this. Wrong one. I also moved it wrong. I'm moving everything but the thing I needed to move. Right there. You can see how it says that you have a profession item tool that can be equipped. You go here, and you equip... You go here and you equip the rod. No longer do you have to put the rod on you. It is now part of a tool. So anytime you fish, it'll just throw the rod out regardless. So now you're pretty much in the clear for that. You don't have to do the rod anymore. You don't have to keep the rod in your inventory. You could finally equip that legendary rod you got from uh, Legion. That's the one. <clears throat> All right. Now where were we? We're at fishing. So there's still a bunch of bobbers you can use. It's still the same bobbers as always. Bright, etc., etc. Now the scribes, once again, you have your new scribe paper, the iridescent water. You can still use the Virtus inking set and the scribe satchel, which, by the way, there is now a separate bag specifically for your reagent satchel. So now... Oh! I see, you need an equipment piece in order to equip the extra bag. So don't do that quite yet. <laughs> but once you unlock that reagent slot in your crafting materials, you can equip that through your equipment gear. Following that, you have the jewel crafting, which you have two misshapen figurines in here for some reason. And then you're back into your cooking. A bunch of new cooking stuff as well, pastry packets, potatoes... Cocoa powder. All right, blacksmithing. You have your hammer. That's it. Doesn't do anything. You have a hammer. Use it. <laughs> Pretty much it. You have your mining pick as well. The ruined copper rod is still in the back as well. You'll still have your explorer satchel. The gateway shard is still here. And the old dyes with vanishing powder still all here as well. But you will not be using any of that. And that is the end of the talk for the rare materials. Now we are in 34 minutes. We're still not done yet. The cooking is a whole different scenario. You have a crap ton of meat now, as well as a crap ton of fish, as well as unique fish that is going to be used specifically for either crafting, or in this scenario, you could throw the fish in the water to gain five fishing for 30 seconds. Throwing multiple fish can extend the buffer five minutes. So this is pretty good. This is exactly like Legion, where you threw fish into the water or you used specific funny fish to end up getting. To end up getting. um What?
What? Can't throw it at the guy that's on fire. So there's a bunch of new food, obviously. Cooking is another big thing that's going to take a huge part in the Dragonflight progression, especially if you're a Race of World First Guild. Min-maxing food is, is huge. Min-maxing food is going to be extremely important because you have everything to Lava Beetles, to Magma Threshers, Prismatic Leapers, a Frosted Tuna, which I imagine you'll find in the, the fishing area. Tuscar. You'll find them at the Tuscar place. And then all of your extravagant recipes between here and again. Now, what happens when you dust off this fish? Oh, I see. You have one hour to cook with this fish, so not ideal if uh, you're in a rush. Does that mean if it's still frosted, does it have a timer? It does not. So it's ideal that you keep this fish unfrosted and then you keep the fish frosted and then you and then you use the fish. So that kind of explains the overall materials of this first part of this video. I'm still going to keep this video going. So the next thing I want to talk about is profession equipment. I want to touch on it a little bit more. Certain professions are able to make profession equipment. But in my experience, what I've seen is that most of it is made strictly by blacksmithing. I say this because blacksmithing can make the blacksmith's hammer, pickaxe, sickle, which is for herbalism, skinning knife, self-explanatory. Then you go into blacksmith tools, which is the same story, but now you have leatherworking tools, leatherworking tools, needles, which is for tailoring. Then you go back into the skinning knife and redo it again. Blacksmithing has three different pieces for your profession gear. So blacksmithing is a very important thing to have very early into the game. I suggest that if you're going to make a... Uh, tune that's not your main the second tune that you should make should be a blacksmithing tune your first tune that you make should always be an alchemist because alchemist provides extremely strong buffs in their specialization page that you want to prioritize when you're in raid because that increases non-combat potion time frame that increases file potion time frame that increases the amount of or decreases the amount of primal chaos you have to put in a cauldron it also makes it to where you can multi-craft the really annoying cauldrons and really annoying potions that you have put into the cauldrons. So very important to have that be on the top priority list for your main tune it has to be, in my opinion, an alchemist and ideally an herbalist while you're leveling it. And then you could swap it to a secondary profession of your, of your preference, which I recommend blacksmithing then, because then once you have a blacksmither and you get gear and you have, ore, you have all that stuff lined up and ready to go, you will be golden. So you are, when you want to pay attention to that, Again, Alchemist, first thing you should make, regardless, no exceptions, because those bonuses are extremely important. But the crafting equipment is also equally important. The accessories allow you to make things like resourcefulness and crafting speed more accessible while also passively increasing your blacksmithing skill. So for example, I am 100 baseline. However, I am 116 because my hammer gives me 10 extra crafting skill, while also giving me six from this secondary piece. I have no idea where the third piece comes from, but I assume it's a bag, which allows me to equip a bag. Anyway, there's a, uh, there's a lot of stuff that kind of goes on with the new uh, crafting universe. And of course, you could always increase specific parts of your craft with your skinning knife and your blacksmith hammer. So for example, let's go to the hammer real quick. You can go and use a missive, which again, is made by inscription, to increase it to where maybe you'll make more of one specific thing. In my opinion, the way that this is going to work for Dragonflight is that you're going to go to the best thing you can make. So for example, your black, black dragon touched hammer. You're going to be like, all right, so I need one for multi-craft, so that way I can make multiple uh, whetstones. I need one for, don't need one for crafting speed. Don't need one for resourcefulness. Inspiration is another one that you're going to need. So I talked about this in the first video. The two stats you should always prioritize is multi-craft and inspiration. In my opinion, when you're trying, trying to make something extremely strong, you want to make a five-tier armor, which is 402, I think. It might be more. You want to have inspiration at max. So your blacksmithing touched hammer you want to throw in this Draconic Missive. Sure, it increases the difficulty by 15, but here's the thing. The hammer already increases it by 10, 
And then you have six on this secondary piece, this blacksmithic toolbox. So what it does is that when it increases the difficulty by 10, my skill is 116. Think about it. If it increases the difficulty by 15, what it's doing is that it's taking my extra 16 and then getting it subtracted by the 15 that bonuses. So it's still going to be 101, which means I'm still crafting something of extremely high tier due to the fact that my crafting skill is as high as it is. Recipe difficulty can be depicted by the fact that it's 450, but when you go ahead and add this recipe difficulty, it does factor in still from your skill bonus, which is 116 plus 113, based on the item itself because of the materials that you're using. Materials that you're using is going to change the skill strength while decreasing, indirectly decreasing the recipe difficulty. So, very important stuff. There's a lot of mathematics behind it. I literally have a 53-page spreadsheet of... All the math behind the best way to maximize and min-max certain pieces of gear. So it's pretty important to take a minute, read it over, and then do it over again. Because the last thing you want to do is have your multi-craft hammer equipped while you're making, say, an obsidian claymore for somebody in the raid. Like, look, you can infuse it with power, which makes it 408, 418. But the thing is, is that the only way they can get this is uh, through crafting orders, because this is a BOP item. So crafting orders can be done with the BOP items that you'll have to pay attention to as well. Ooh, that was a big, big breath there. Holy moly. Anyway. That kind of wraps it up, actually. There's not really too much else I can really highlight here other than the PvP gear. Uh, for blacksmithing, it is something I will talk about very quickly, because... I already have it anyway. As you saw that there are two items that allow you to be unique equipped now, much like the 262 items, but now PVP has the same kind of thing as well. So as you can see here, there's a first mastery item that you can equip because it is also a PVP item, but it will take the slot of a tier piece. But we're using this just as an example. As you can see at the top of the screen, it does say unique equipped embellished too. So that means you could quit two embellished items, which are either gonna be some of your PVP items or for this example, your PVP items. So, with the description here, it says that your spells and abilities have a chance to rally you and your four closest allies 30 yards for 10 seconds, increasing your verse by basically 200. If I were to infuse it with power, it would be even more so. So that's the big thing, is, is that these unique items are also usable in PvP, in which case there's some that actually decrease your overall uh, crowd control time, which I'm sure you people have seen on Twitter and Reddit are pretty important. In fact, there's damaging a new enemy that gives you 189 haste. There is enemies who damage you take 8k damage over 6 seconds, increases PvP. So this is this is one of those actual PvP items. This is something that it's going to look like this basically. But like these items are basically what I was talking about. Gladiators distinct incoming crown control by 5%. That's what I was talking about earlier. There are items that decreases the incoming crown control you can get. And it's strictly these top five items, at least in the blacksmith line here. One of them is the damaging a new enemy. One of them gives you more vase, uh, more verse for every ally within 30, uh, 30 yard radius, stacking up to four times. So you get 47 times four or times five, probably. And then, you know, the rally, which is 200. Honestly, if you were going to use something, if you're a tank, you're going to put this belt on. You're going to ask your crafter to infuse it with power to make it a 418 which the concentrated primal infusion, by the way, it I'm pretty sure it comes from raid because I have no idea where it exists and how I am supposed to get it. But uh, yeah, with that being said, then, ladies and gentlemen, this was a very long video. This was the advanced tactics video. We talked about every material in the game while also kind of expanding on certain crafting bits like professions, specializations, and so on, while also highlighting some gear uh, deals as well. Once I manage to find the uh, adventure guide and go to raids, we'll see if this item comes off of anything in particular. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't actually know. It doesn't. It's. It doesn't count towards like the actual gear thing. The raid does drop crafting materials, so keep that in mind when you are crafting. There's if you're part of a mythic cutting edge guild and you're running mythic right now, and by right now I mean when you're doing it. Pay attention to that and uh, get to it, basically, because you want to make sure you secure those materials yourself so you, you can make your team the finest gear in the land. So with that being said, 
Oh, Jesus. Sorry. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this extended crafting video. I think it was almost double the time as the other one. But I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again soon for some more Dragonflight crafting. After this video, we are going to talk about each and every profession in extreme detail. So stay tuned. Don't go far. More World of Warcraft action will be coming your way very, not very shortly, but... Uh, in the next couple of days, you'll be seeing a big slew of guides for each and every single profession. So I hope you enjoyed this video, even though I've already done this intro outro three times. I, I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a lot of fun doing crafting, and I, I, I know I joke about this still. I am still looking to craft for a Race the World First guild for the Race the World First coming up in December. So, uh... I would love to connect with you and work with your crafting team as well as possibly be your crafting coordinator. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed. And there's more World of Warcraft action coming up in the next couple of days. Thank you much. Have a good rest of the night. Party PD signing off. Holy moly, so many outros that I'm not doing right. I'll see you guys next time.